LTM 1050 comes in a standard Liebherr branded box and although this is the version in the Irish company uh, Colours of McNally's um, it's only a label on the side that, that indicates that. Inside the model is contained within uh, expanded polystyrene trays as usual. Um, on the top you have the various pieces of counterweight and also a Liebherr ingot that can be used as a load and we'll see that later. I've already split the tape around the edge of the box and if your luck's in when you take the lid off uh, the model will be the right way up and inside you've got a small bag of parts the uh, crane itself and you have to be careful handling it because like many WSI models there's lots of very small parts on the model and uh, it could be damaged if you handle it roughly and the fly jib but there were no instructions with this model um, which is a bit disappointing but WSI have said they will correct that for future models this is a version in a special livery and it does come with a little certificate uh, which has got some history of the McNally's company and a unique serial number for the model. And before we look at any of the details of the model we'll assemble some of the parts that have to be fitted. This is made of four separate pieces um, which just clip together in the right order. Um, the clips are just like plastic push fit clips and on the review model they're a little bit loose so they can come apart. So try to press them together and if you've done it in the right order then you'll see looking end on it's like a kind of a triangle shape and then with the completed piece you can just pop it on the underside of the crane and it's again it's just a push fit and uh, it clips into place and when that's done you've got the counterweight loaded as if it was in an operational configuration with the crane working it's also possible to show the counterweight um, correctly stowed for when the crane is in uh, road going configuration so the bottom three pieces just uh, pull off and you can just uh, clip them onto the top of the carrier and when that's done you can lower the boom and the last touch is just to um, fix the hook at the uh, tying on point at the front of the cab and then you've got the crane in road configuration one last thing we can add on is the swing away fly jib um, this is a little bit fiddly just to get in place. It rests on uh, three uh, holders that uh, come off the boom. And if you position it right, you can actually then just pin uh, one of the eyes of the fly jib into position and it's securely fixed. So with the model fully assembled, we can have a look at the details. And this is a very detailed model. And if we have a look at the tread on the tyres, that's really good. And you can see the outriggers and the lights and the number plate at the front are all very good. At the back there's good uh, light details with uh, number plates and you can see the Liebherr name cast into the counterweight section and there are some hydraulic hoses underneath. The interior of the cab is particularly well detailed on this model with the computer console and the dashboard having graphics and you can see even the hook um, is well detailed when looked up close. Now we'll check out the functionality of the chassis. The steering is notched on all of the axles but the range of movement is good. Um, the range is slightly less on the middle axle which is realistic um, and all the steering is independent so you can set it to steer at quite an angle if you like and that uh, works quite well. You've also got the option to uh, set the model for crab steering in which all the axles uh, point in one direction and that works quite well too. Looking underneath the model, the suspension, transmission and steering components are all modelled really well, uh, mostly in plastic. And at the front there is a ladder which you can disconnect. It's a bit of a short ladder so you can't really um, use it to reach up to the um, fly jib connections, but you can rest it against the body if that's what you'd like to do. 
One feature which is really good on this model is the outriggers. The beams just pull out and when you wind the pads down you can see that the um, pistons look like pistons and not screw threads so it's very realistic. But the pads have an interesting mechanism because they can be offset from centre just like that. And the reason for that is, is that then when the crane is driving along the pads can be fully underneath the line of the body and not sticking out. So it's very well implemented on this model. Um, you get four small pins which can be used to pin the pads into place. So you can insert the pin into its offset position like that to secure it. And when you're setting the crane up uh, as if it's being used, you slide the pad over and then you can insert the pin in. But a word of warning, the pins are uh, very loose within uh, the pads and they're very easy to drop out and lose on the floor. Here the crane is now set up with all the outriggers down and uh, they're on the support pads that are supplied with the model. And if you unhitch the hook from the front then it's an easy matter to raise the boom up because the boom lift cylinder is not very stiff on this model. And of course the crane can be rotated quite easily. There's another feature which is the uh, tilting cab. Um, and this is used when the operator needs to look up for a long time and save his neck ache. Now the crane's all set up with the full counterweight installed at the back and we can hang the lead pair weight that's supplied with the model onto the hook. This gives it a little bit of weight which helps keep some tension in the hoist ropes and there's a special key supplied which just fits onto the end of the winch and by turning that you can raise and lower the hook. Also at the back there's another little feature which is a flap which can be opened just above the winch drum and closed. With the boom up it's easier to see some of the details and here behind the cab of the carrier you can see some of the really fine mesh work that's uh, present on the model. There are also plenty of hydraulic lines in the body of the crane. There is another good small feature on the cab and that is the uh, walkway just in front of the cab and you can see that just slides out and uh, pops back again so you can maintain an accurate width on the crane when on the road. Extending the boom is easy and straightforward you need to remove the pin of the fly jib if you've pinned it on and then it's an easy matter just to pull the telescopic sections out and you can see on this model that the McNally's name is appearing on every boom section which is uh, a nice touch. One display option you have is to fit the fly jib. Um, it just opens up and pins into place. Because there's no pulley at the end of the lattice section, you have to open up the, the solid section and then just pin it into place. Fixing the fly jib to the boom is easy. You just uh, pop it over and then using the two long pins supplied, you just put a pin through the holes on each side and that secures it to the boom. Now you can disconnect the hoist rope tie off point by just pulling the pin out and the tie off point just with a bit of effort comes off and then the thread can actually just neatly slot out just like on the uh, on the real crane this um, but the thread has a knot at the end as you can see it just keeps it in place but unfortunately that knot means it can't pass through the hook so you don't have any choice but to cut the knot off and then tie a new one when you're ready. So you can pass a string over the top of the fly jib just like that, pass it through the hook and tie a new knot, uh, attach it to the tie off point and then fix it to the top of the fly jib. Um, that gives you a two full arrangement on the hook. Really this model needs a single line hook which would look better on the fly jib. With the hoist cut off chain fitted the model is all set and uh, poses well with the fly jib uh, fixed on and if you fully extend the boom then you get really quite a large model. I mentioned before that the main boom lift cylinder wasn't very stiff so if you want to avoid that feeling of your boom drooping you can insert a supplied pin and the one that seems to fit just uh, pushes into the cylinder although it doesn't look too good um, it's quite obtrusive really. There is one more configuration possibility and that uh, is using the fly jib and you can disconnect the very end of it and get what's known as the short erection jib. So you just pull out the two clips and that leaves uh, this piece which can be used on its own at the end of the boom. 
although you can't adjust the angle of the short offset jib and it's actually quite difficult to rig the hook properly it does give you another display option in summary this is a really good crane model by WSI the details on it are excellent and the functionality is very good too and it looks really good in McNally's livery no hesitation it's highly recommended Thank <laughs> you.